and techniques. There is no software and hardware way to prevent the social engineering. It completely depends on manipulating the scenario. All right. So, for example, uh, I think you guys are having the bank accounts, right? Yes or no? You guys are having the bank accounts, right? So be genuine, be genuine. Uh, what is the URL of your bank? So don't Google it now. Don't Google that. Just let me know what is the URL of your bank. Do you guys know that? What is the URL of your bank account? The bank, what you are you holding for? Be genuine, yes or no? Right, no. So you're not aware of the things which you are holding. Right. So, for example, if you are holding SBA bank, so if I ask you what is the URL of SBA, you guys are not aware of that. So that is where the social engineering starts. That is why the hackers choose the social engineering. Why? Because you people are not aware of the information what you are holding. That to have valuable information. So, this is where the social engineering depends. So it's it's not easy to perform the social engineering again. Remember, uh, you need to gather the information of the, your target. So as a hacker, you need to collect as much as information about your target. Then only you can able to perform the social engineering trick. So it's not an easy social engineering is. Yes. Okay. So as I mentioned for you, just a second. Just give me a minute. Right. So, yeah, that is where the social engineering that hackers perform. Yeah. So if you see social engineering is nothing but it's an art of convincing the people to reveal the confidential information. And the common targets of social engineering includes like they pretend as a as audit support executive system administrators like that. They pretend here. Means, uh, they won't directly interact with you. Here they uh, come with a uh, information and where they'll use that information and perform the attack on you people. So as I told you, social engineering depends on the fact that people are unaware of the valuable information to which they have access. That is what uh, just now we did. So you guys are having the bank, bank accounts, but you don't know the URL of your bank. Where attacker will trick you by sending some SMS saying that uh, you have credited some amount. Uh, uh, so go through your net banking through this link. It's look like same. SBI, for example, uh, how they trick you in the sense, uh, what is the URL of ICIC bank? It's ICICIbank.com. This is the URL. If it is an SBI, it's uh, online SBI.SBI. This is the URL, actually. So uh, is this, can I make like this? Is this belongs to ICICI? ICICI dot bank.com is this a uh, belongs to the icici what do you say no right so actually the domain of this is already icic bank domain is taken you can't perform the phishing now. already the domain was taken by icic bank so you can't create the same url so now how hackers trick you Simple by taking the domain like bank dot. Can I can I get the bank dot com URL? Can I purchase the domain? Yes, I can purchase that bank dot com. And this is domain as you know. Before the dot com, whatever we see that is domain. That is what the domain. And before domain, whatever you see, this part is 
sub domain sub domain i can take anything like google amazon facebook any 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 name i can take as a sub domain but a main domain name i can't take it why because already they have taken that so what can i do here i can simply send a url which look like this bank.com so many of them think like this is an icic bank so they'll click on that and it will redirect to a page where the page look like same as i can i can clone the website you know you can clone the website it's easy uh, there are many tools like a uh, htt track there is tool web cloner so like that you can use these tools and you can clone the website and you can host it on a server where it looks like same as icic bank website only but url but url is not belongs to icic bank it belongs to bank.com like that they'll trick you many ways like for example there is amazon dot diwali festival dot com now tell me is this belongs to amazon is this belongs to the amazon what do you guys say no so then what is the domain here it's actually diwali festival is a domain a diwali festival is the domain and amazon is a sub domain so if you can see uh, uh, when 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 there are some festivals and or some occasions uh, you'll get a you'll get a whatsapp link saying that uh, there is 90% deal is going on or 80% uh, deal is going on so just visit these websites where it look like an amazon when you click this it will redirect to some websites like which like uh, amazon india like that there are some websites right so where it looks like same as amazon but it's not belongs to the amazon so what is the url of amazon it's an amazon dot com or dot us or dot in these are the urls so amazon is the domain not sub domain here so this that is how the people trick you and make you to click that link or uh, make you to run that application in your system and get the control or get the information from your end that is how they perform the social engineering is that clear you guys are getting me are you guys able to follow me this right so that is what the point i mentioned here so social engineering completely depends on the fact where the people are unaware of the valuable information to which they have access to which they have access and are careless about the protecting it that is where the social engineering they perform and can you see the impact of social engineering and even uh, how many of you know that uber got attacked you know uber got attacked in 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 last uh, i think 2021 or 2022 september around at the time uber got attacked you know that uh, there is a there is a guy i think 14 or 16 years of old guy the uh, eng this guy uh, took the control of the uber servers so again what trick they use is social engineering only he sent a phishing link to that employee one of the employee in the organization you can see i'll i'll show you the case study uh i think somewhere i have uh, yeah here we have so you can see he just perform a social engineering through i think smishing link he sent uh, he clicked that smishing link uh, and he got the credentials of that vpn vpn where you can connect to the server right and he entered into the he entered that vpn and uh, scan that intra network and same i got using some in map or something he scan he got some uh, shared network files uh, uh, he got some directories when he extract the directories he have file, powershell scripts when he extract the powershell scripts he got the admin username and password and through that he log into the portal and he got the access to all this aws g suite one log in all this so which gives to credentials for the services and got the access to this so here it contains all the client's data your uh, your transaction your rights your profile your email uh, everything everything they have that in the server so simply they got the control of these entire uber services yeah it's happened to the railway tickets too right so again social engineering only i can say 80% 80% of the attacks are social engineering attacks only remaining 20% are vulnerability based or zero day attacks remaining everything will be the social engineering only they'll send a link 
make you to click on that link or trick you guys to run that application and take the control of the device. So that is where they perform the social engineering. So 80% of the attacks I can say as a social engineering attacks. Only. Is that clear? So you can see the impact. So economy loss means the competitors may use the social engineering techniques to steal the sensitive information, uh, such as the development plans and marketing strategies of the target company, so which can result in an economic loss. Again, that is what the uh, impact on the organization. And then damage of goodwill. So for an organization, uh, goodwill is very important, right? For attracting the customers. So it will damage that reputation also. So social engineering attacks may damage the goodwill by leaking the sensitive organization data and loss of privacy. So privacy is a major concern, as you know, especially for big organizations. So if an organization is unable to maintain the privacy of its customers, then people can lose the trust in the company and may discontinue their business association with that organization. Right. And danger of terrorism. So terrorism and anti-social elements, uh, which pose a threat to the organization's assets. So terrorists may use the social engineering techniques to make the blueprint of their targets to infiltrate their targets information. And lawsuits and abrasions, uh, uh, which results in negative publicity for uh, an organization. And even it affects the business performance too. And temporary or permanent closure. So social engineering uh, can result in loss of goodwill. So loss, lawsuits and abrasions may force the temporary or permanent closure of the organization and its business activity. So completely it impacts the business when it is an organization base. Right. And you can see the behavior vulnerable to attacks. So they'll create some authority means uh, uh, like uh, attacker take the advantage uh, of these by uh, presenting themselves as an authorized person. Right, such as like technician or an executive in the target organization to steal the information important data in the organization, and uh, uh, even he creates some trust, intimidations, uh, and even scarcity. Like in the context of social engineering, scarcity often employs creating a feeling of urgency in a decision making process. So, due to this urgency, attackers can control the information provided to the victims and manipulate the decision making process that is how the things work here like that they'll go with the greed trust and uh, using these things uh, they'll take the control of your things this is where they create that urgency here to perform this attack and why social engineering is effective so as i mentioned of various security policies preventing the social engineering is a challenge because humans are the most uh, susceptible factor here Right. So it is challenging to detect the social engineering attempts. So social engineering is the art and science of manipulating the people to get their information. And no method that can detect the social engineering here. I mean, no method guarantees the complete security from social engineering attacks. Okay. And there is no specific software or hardware to defend against the social engineering attacks. And this approach is relatively cheap or free and easy to implement. Got it? So that is why the social engineering is a more effective here. Got my point? And there are some phases of social engineering too. To perform the social engineering, they follow some phases like uh, research about the target or select the target, develop a relationship and exploit the relationship. So research the target in the sense, uh, dumpster diving scenarios means uh, uh, like collecting the information about the target, extracting their information, uh, what the organization is for, how many uh, uh, projects they are doing on, the location of the organization, like all these informations they'll collect. The later they select the target in that organization. So again, I won't select a normal employee in the organization. Obviously, I select the employee only, but not a normal employee. I'll, I'll go with a frustrated guy or else a disgruntled person. Why? So again, in selecting the target also, it's very important to know which one we need to select here. 
so as you know it's it's uh, where the attackers will reach out to these disgruntled or uh, uh, the frustrated fellows only why why because they give more information means they'll give more information about the company right and they are vulnerable to attack exactly so that is why in choosing that also make sure about that choose these kind of people and then develop a relationship with them once the target is set so you have to build a relationship with that uh, employee to accomplish your task okay and then once you create the trust then go with the exploiting the relationship means uh, where you exploit the relationship and uh, extract the sensitive information about the organizations uh, accounts finance information tech technologies in use and even upcoming plans all this information you can collect right so this is where the hacker follows the phases so even we have the five phases of hacking in that we have phases of social engineering attack these are the four phases we are having and next we have uh, different types of uh, social engineering techniques so if you see three different types we have one is human based computer based and mobile based so when it comes to the human based human based in the sense uh, here uh, the attacker is directly interacting with the target means uh, he involves human interaction so acting as uh, though they are a legitimate person so the attacker interacts with the employees of the target organization to collect the sensitive information so such as their business plans networks whether it might help them in launching their attacks right so in that you can see the different techniques see most of the time they'll ask you these techniques remember the terminologies just remember the the terminologies and their functionality human based in the sense there is no technology involved in that most of the time or we directly interact with the target or directly interacting with the target collect the information right for example how many of you are aware of the impersonation how many of you are aware of impersonation any idea about the impersonation mm, what is that pretending to be someone legit okay so pretending to be someone legit here means he he act as uh, means he is pretending to be a legitimate person here like for example you'll get a calls from the company saying that i'm calling from so and so company or else uh, you'll get a job offer frauds like uh, pretending to be working as uh, a senior consultant in this company and uh, you you are selected for the job or uh, to to attend the interview you need to go with the deposit money like that or else you'll get the um, call from the bank saying that i'm a bank manager right you need to update your other card or else you need to oh, going to face the consequences or your account is going to block like that they pretend so yeah they pretend as a, a, a legitimate person that is what impersonation we call now what there are many scams going on how many of you are aware of these uh, ivr calls how many of you are aware of the ivr calls anyone ivr calls we call this as a uh, interactive voice response or like uh, uh, which are uh, automated telephone systems we use actually like you'll get a call from some customer care press 1 press 2 press 3 like that you have a Uh, a pre-recorded uh, message or a text-to-speech technology, right? IVR we call it in uh, like interactive voice response. Like I'll show some scams here. Nowadays, how they are doing is uh, I hope you guys are having the Amazon accounts or Flipkart accounts or some ATM uh, like debit card or credit cards, right? So how they trick you guys is uh, I'll show you some sample. Uh, you'll get a, you'll get a call from that IVR calls you get saying that. Uh, uh you there is a, a unauthorized transaction happened from your account uh, if you not done the transaction you'll get a, you need to verify your bank account uh, and you'll get a verification code please validate that and plus star like that you'll get that so what you people will do at the time got a call saying that there is a this call is regarding from bank i say c bank or something they used to say and say that uh, like uh, your account uh, had a uh, this uh, what do you say a unauthorized transaction or uh, something like that 
and say that uh, to, if you're not done with the transaction plus one, once you click on one, again, it says enter your bank account. Once you click on entering your bank account, it will ask for the verification code. So like that, they trick you, right? So if you see here, most of the times they use these bots, OTP bots or uh, this IVR bots they use. Okay, uh, most of the time you can see that in telegrams. You can see this scenario here. Account. To secure your account, please enter the verification. So if you observe here, what, what, what it's saying, there is an authorized transaction happened from your account. To secure your account, go with your code. verification code, which is nothing but the OTP actually. From Citibank, followed by the pound sign. Verification completed. Goodbye. It's done. But if you see, the guy got that uh, OTP code of yours. Can you see? Uh, is that screen visible for you guys? Right. So that did trick you. Means this says that uh, you got a illegal transaction. So if you want to secure your account like that, they'll they'll tell you. Right, so there are many OTP bots you can find it from them. So where you can go for the premium and you can get that OTP bots and you can uh, make these IVR calls and you can do. And there is another trick call like uh, uh, this one. What you can say, uh, most of the time, like you can say, you'll get a WhatsApp message from some foreign number saying that uh, you got a job. Uh, the job is very simple. We'll send the links. You need to watch that YouTube video or else go with the Google reviews. Once you do the Google reviews, uh, take the screenshot, submit that, they'll pay 150 rupees or 200 rupees. Like that, they'll offer you. So you'll do that frequently. Like you're getting the easy money. You're making a easy money, right? Just you're watching the video, liking that, taking the screenshot and submitting. Or doing the Google review, taking the screenshot and submitting. Whatever the link they send. So you're getting a, around some 150 rupees. First you'll do, you'll get 150. Next you'll do, you'll get 150. Next, you'll go, you'll get 150. Means here they're creating some trust. Okay, getting my point? They'll create some trust. So once they create the trust, what they do? Now they'll play the trick. See, they won't, they won't directly perform the attack every time. Remember, they come with this, uh, a detailed idea. Like they'll, they'll read the minds of people. Right? So like that, so you can see they're offering something. They'll send the link. Once you do that, you need to take the screenshot, submit that. Once you submit that, they'll pay money for you. Okay. So congratulations on your first paycheck like that. They'll give you 150 rupees. So once you're done with that, again, some other thing, some other thing. So it's time to leave work. And that's the end of the today work. See you tomorrow at 9.30. Again, I'll say like that. Well, once you've done that, so again, completing the prepaid task, uh, increase the part-time membership level. So now you're currently an ordinary part-time. After completing this prepaid task, the part-time membership will become VIP one like that. They'll they'll make it. Means uh, rating task salary increase to 60 rupees or 150 rupees or daily 1,000 rupees. Previously, they are giving 150 rupees. And you got that 150 rupees thrice or five times like that, you'll get that. Once you're done, they'll trick again saying that uh, now you're going to be a permanent member. So for that, you need to go with some deposit amounts like 2,000 or 3,000. So once you do that, next time, whatever the work you do, you'll get 1,000 rupees. So what you'll do, you believe, you'll, you'll go with the deposit in that money. Again, they'll ask you, again, they'll ask you like that. Some lakhs of rupees they have taken from many people. So this is how they trick you. This is how they impersonate you people. So impersonation is nothing but here pretending to be someone legit. Is that clear? Right. Right. So they send APK file also. So you should not do that. No one will ask you that scenario, actually. Right. So that's a fake scenario. So where attackers pretend to be someone legit or unauthorized person. That is what we call as an impersonation. And impersonation helps the attacker to trick the target into revealing the sensitive information. So you don't have a bank account. So this is how they trick you. So the most common human-based social engineering is the common. The common and frequently used human-based social engineering is impersonation only impersonation only right 
and there is a wishing scenario. So what is wishing? Do you have any idea about the wishing? We call this as a VoIP phishing or voice over internet protocol basis or voice phishing scenarios. Have you heard this term of wishing? Same, like you got the call, right? Saying that, uh, uh, like you need to update your other card. Like that means I'm using a voice here, a telephone. So that scenario means using this voice and performing the impersonation, that scenario is called wishing. I'll, I'll show you one, one of the example. So when you Google it about the social engineering, all right, so you can see a video here. Just, just go through that. So I invited best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my owner. Is that audible for you guys? It's not OTP of voice or, is that audible? Just confirm, yes, it's audible, right? So actually, uh, it is a, a a kind of uh, conference uh, which I, which was held by the DEFCON every year. Uh, in that conference, you can see a big people like big hackers, pro hackers, where they demonstrate their skills, hacking skills. So it happened at two years ago. This about this scenario. So you can see there is a girl called Jessie. Uh, she did a wishing wishing demonstration she demonstrated on a wishing scenario that is what about the video see how she convinced the uh, the customer care and get the email username and password just to see at the time it's long back ago not now it's long back ago uh, just see how she convinced so the video is about to how the phishing will work how they convince the people how they trick the people how they play with their feelings all these things so you can see this You want to do a sample of phishing call? What's phishing? Phishing is voice solicitation. And basically, um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Okay. You, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider okay. and see if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my phone. <laughs> but yeah, go, go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. Okay. Hi, I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me okay? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my, my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan and then we just had a baby and he's like, get this done by today. So I'm so sorry. I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> so I'm trying to log into our account for uses information and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying and, um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds. At gmail.com? That's where it gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our neighbor daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message. Yeah, well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm not on there either. I, so I thought when we got married, um, he added my account. Yes, you took my girlfriend's name and a big social security number. Five one two seven. Which set up her personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry. So there's no password on my account right now. Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her set up. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Holy shit. So they they <laughs> gave they gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're gonna have to go on and change your password now because it's just my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. So you got that? Hmm. So how she tricked that person? Just by playing a baby a baby crying sound, like creating some urgency there. And uh, as as the same side, uh, she she is impersonating as uh, her, her, her wife and getting the information, right? So again, while while she performing, she used the name, number, all these things. So again, that is what information gathering. So when you perform the information gathering, then only using that information we can perform the social engineering. 
so social engineering is completely convincing the people it's not an easy thing it's not an easy job to but uh, here you can see without running any code we convince the persons and we got the information right we took the control of that account too so did i send any link did i send any malware did i exploited their systems nothing there is no code involved in this particular attack got that that is what we called as a social engineering so it's a human based technique so to impersonate here i'm using a voice a telephonic uh, or it's kind of an electronic fraud you can say in which where attackers trick the individuals to reveal the personal information using voice technology such as your telephone systems or a uh, vivo ip calls okay so that is what a wishing is that clear so wishing is a part see wishing is a part of an impersonation but here impersonating using some uh, telephone systems and vivo ip services got it that is what uh, wishing and when it comes to the use dropping what is use dropping hmm an area use dropping is nothing but uh, uh, like uh, listening to someone's conversation now you can see there is phone tapping issue going on in telangana you heard about that phone tapping there is an issue going on actually it's a hot topic in telangana so the tap the tap many people's phones means listening to the their conversations without their knowledge that is kind of an use dropping attack on it's an use dropping attack so listening to uh, means listening to a conversation or reading other messages uh, in an unauthorized way is called use drop okay so where it includes the interception of any form of communication including your audio video or even written so using channels such as your telephone lines emails or even instant messaging they'll perform these attacks so attacker can obtain the sensitive information such as the passwords business plans phone numbers addresses everything by performing this use dropping so use dropping is nothing but uh, listening to someone's conversation without their knowledge is called use dropping right so we say like koda chat nundi winter antar kada so that is what comes under the use dropping scenario only and when it comes to the shoulder surfing so shoulder surfing in the sense uh, simple uh looking looking someone's uh, data means uh, it is a kind of a technique of looking over someone's shoulder as the as the key information into a device means uh, uh, when you go for atms or when you are in public places we'll type the passwords right so have you observed if anyone is observing that activity or not have you guys observed any time maybe the guy who is sitting beside you can see that right without your knowledge So we'll just open our mobile. We'll type our password. So the guy sitting behind us or somewhere beside, they can they can monitor these activities. So that scenario we called as the shoulder surfing. Okay. So while you can see there is a movie called Nanak Premato. Have you seen that? They use a camera on on painting while he typing the password. They capture that. So that is a kind of a a shoulder surfing. Right. so there is a direct observation technique uh, such as looking over someone's shoulders to get the information such as the password pins or account numbers and can also be done from a further distance with the aid of vision enhancing devices such as binoculars they can do these activities and dumpster diving is nothing but looking for the treasure in someone else's trash so looking for the data in trash bins also like we'll just uh, throw our, uh, a paper or a account uh, transaction when we done the transaction you'll get a receipt will draw that receipt there so where hackers collect that and they can see how much amount of money you are having in your account that information or uh, any any other information they can collect through this trashes only and you can see in, in movies also they'll show you uh, uh, they'll look for the data in trashes maybe they can find that especially in this seventh sense movie they'll find the uh, the professor's information in email trash in email trash bin so whatever the message they deleted they'll go to the trash of email and they'll see that uh, activity so we're looking for the data or information in trashes also that scenario we called as dumpster diving but see try to remember the terminologies very 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 important they're not technical based a human based attacks okay 
so dumpster driving is kind of a process of retrieving the sense to or uh, organizational information by searching through a trash bins so where attackers can extract these confidential data such as user ids password policy numbers or the network drive uh, diagrams or account numbers bank statements salary data source code salesforce access codes phone list credit card numbers like many many things they can find so an attacker can then use this information to perform the various malicious activities sometimes attackers even use the pretext to support their dumpster diving act in activities initiatives sorry initiatives so such as impersonating a repair person or a technician or a cleaner or a other legitimate worker like that he impersonate and get into that and collect the information by looking into the trashes so that is what we call as a dumpster diving all right and next we have the reverse social engineering so reverse social engineering is is very difficult to carry out why because uh, here the attacker will create the problem and he will only come as a problem solver okay so this is primarily because it its execution needs a lot of preparation and skills so in this the preparator assumes the role of the knowledgeable professional so that organizations employees ask them for information and the attacker usually manipulates the questions to draw out the required information and collect the information here. or else he will only create the problem and uh, then present themselves as a problem solver through general conversation so that scenario we call as a reverse social engineering okay and then piggybacking piggybacking means any idea piggybacking in a sense uh, for example uh, there is a there is a building there is an organization as an outsider you are not having access to that building so what you do use someone's uh, information or else you ask them to like builders has a thief no no not like that piggybacking is something like for example you need to take the entry into that organization so there is a biometric or smart card entry so while a authorized person is passing through that you have to convince that person to take the entry like i i'll tell that i forgot my id card inside or else uh, I'll, I'll i'll i'm holding some books in my hands and uh, uh, seeking for help with them asking them to help to open the door like that i'll i'll trick the uh, authorized person to open or to allow me inside so that scenario we called as a piggybacking got that so piggybacking where it implies entry into a building or a secret area with the consent of the authorized person okay so for example an attacker might request an authorized person to unlock a secret door saying that they have forgotten their id badge so in the interest of uh, common courtesy obviously the authorized person will allow the attackers to pass through the door so that is how we take the entry into the unauthorized area and same similar to that we have a tailgating same activity but in tailgating here we completely create a fake identity or fake badge so where same accessing to a building or a secret area without the consent of the authorized see in this piggybacking with the consent of authorized only you are getting the access <laughs> remember that with the consent of the authorized person only you are getting the access here without their consent you have to take the entry so it is the act of following an authorized person through a secure entrance as a polite user right hold the door for the for those following them so attackers wearing a fake badge might attempt to enter the secure area by closely following uh, an authorized person through a door that requires the key access so then they try to uh, enter the restricted area while pretending to be an authorized person there right yeah exactly so machine impossible since that most you can see that exactly right so but remember the terminology is what i am using here the piggybacking or tailgating or uh, reverse social engineering wishing dumpster diving shoulder surfing so just aware of these terminology is very important to remember them okay and next is diversion theft so where the attacker tricks a person responsible for making a genuine delivery into the delivering consignment to the location to other than means 
who are trying to deliver something uh, uh, we are convincing them to some other routes from there we are testing their products that scenario we called as diversion theft means uh, uh, when they are making a genuine delivery uh, and uh, we make them to deliver the consumer to the wrong location and uh, interrupting the transaction and taking the access of that complete van and take the products from there so that is how the diversion theft happened here and you know the honey trap so what is honey trap you know there are many things going in online nowadays so a fake online relationship they they attract the people okay and uh, make some fake online relationship to obtain the confidential information that is what a honey trap right and baiting scenario ah uh, instagram one see recently it happened like honey trap has happened for the a guy who is working in drdo or they got some con miss the girl is from pakistan basis she made a relationship with this guy through online and got some sensitive information ah uh, dera baba example ah uh, you can say that also but fine but here the sensitive information i collect from this and then we have the baiting scenario so baiting is nothing but uh, where attacker offer the end user something alluring in exchange for the important information right or else uh, when you want for this cracked version operating cracked version applications when you click on that it will lead it to some page then they will conduct the survey uh, where it lost for the uh, details of yours uh, personal information and then they will provide that software means they are providing that software for free but again they are collecting the information from your end there is a kind of a baiting scenario or else uh, for example i am dropping some usb some locations i'm dropping dropping some usbs in the company uh, in 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 elevators or in wash areas i'll just drop that usbs so any one of that guy can pick that uh, pen drive right or that usb and he'll try to see what it contains inside that right so out of curiosity and greed the victim picks up that device and open it on their system and which downloads the bait means the malware once the bait is downloaded a piece of malicious software will be installed on the victim systems and giving the attacker access that is what a baiting scenario and quick pro queue so quick pro queue is nothing but something for something the meaning of that is something for something so in this technique attackers keep calling some random numbers within a company and claiming to be calling from a technical support so this is the baiting technique where attackers offer their service to the end users in exchange of confidential data or login credentials for example there is an attacker gather gather some random phone numbers of the employees of a target organization and he start is it just a second yeah we start uh, acting as uh, sorry we keep on collecting the information sorry uh, the attackers gather the some phone numbers right uh, of the employees of the target organization and then uh, start calling each number and pretending to be from some different department in the same company like it department so attackers eventually find someone with a genuine technical issue and offers their service to this persons now attacker can ask the victim to follow a series of steps and to type in the specific commands to install and launch the malicious files like for example best example i can give for this is uh, there is a scammer you can see india is in top in scamming you know that it's in top 2 india india bangladesh pakistan <laughs> especially in scamming scenarios uh, uh, have you have you followed this guy called uh, payback scammer scammer payback if not uh, uh, just see his video see how how uh, he go for that uh, payback scammer here right 
So there is a scammer payback uh, YouTube channel. So if possible, when you get the time, when you get the time, uh, make sure just go through these videos. Uh, see how how they convince the people and how they manipulate you people and how they take the money from your end. Like they, he expose every person. Like you you seen this movie called Mosagalu, the Manchu Manoj movie will be there. Sorry, Manchu Vishnu's movie will be there. That is called Mosagalu. Same, they'll, they'll set up an environment, uh, they have a call center and they start calling some random US people and uh, uh, offering them some uh, products uh, or offering them to renewal their products like that. Uh, uh, they manipulate those people and collect the money. So you can see, you can see his videos. So they'll, they'll go, they have explained you in detail about how the scams work, how they do the scamming, how he reverse them. They thought they are scamming this guy, but reverse, he scam them. So just just go through. If possible, just see the scammer bite. Scam biter will be there. Scammer payback we have. So just just see their videos. See how the things work. How the real social engineering they do. They'll show you in practical actually, right? So again, through mouth only. Like in the sense, uh, it's it's a non technical base only. Completely they interact with them, right? Exactly. So. That is what the quid pro quo means. Something for something. They'll offer something and they'll collect that information from them. And then illustrations we have, which is nothing but directly having the conversation with the person and uh, creating some trust with them and poses good social skills to take the advantage of the professionals or uh, social opportunities to communicate with the persons. So who have access to the sensitive information. So in this attacker, where attackers involved directly with the person and uh, convincing him and collecting the information from him only. That is what elicitation scenario. So these are all completely the human based social engineering techniques means uh, collecting the information by interacting with the target, A direct interacting with the target. And when it comes to the computer based, so computer based is completely phishing scenario. I think you guys are aware of phishing, right? What is phishing in general? What is phishing? Anyone? You may heard about this term phishing. Salami attack. Ah, okay. Mm. You watch that broadcaster using that term, using the broadcast. Sending links to victims, sending fake links to the victims as real ones. Yeah. See, uh, a phishing is a kind of a, a computer based social engineering. Why? Because yet they involve in technique base. So, it is a practice of sending some legit, illegitimate emails. It's an illegitimate, illegitimate email climbing from a legitimate site. Right. So you'll get a mail saying that uh, you got this mail from so and so company. You need to click on this link. Uh, so once you click on that link, uh, it will redirect to some login page where they'll like, cure your username and password. So which look like legitimate, but actually it is an illegitimate scenario. So phishing is a practice of sending the illegitimate email claiming to be a legitimate site in an attempt to acquire a user's personal account information. So phishing emails or pop-ups redirect users to the fake web pages that mimic the trustworthy sites. So which ask them to submit their personal information. So that is where the phishing is, right? And uh, how phishing works in real time. Yeah, actor for attempting the sensitive information here. How these things work in real time? Hmm? What do you think? So is that possible to perform the phishing? Is that easy? What do you think? 
what it requires to perform this fishing. Hmm? Fake mails from bank. No, no, no. Like as an attacker, what you will do here? What it requires for you to perform the attack? Hmm? I'll tell you, it's not an easy thing here to perform the phishing. Whatever you see, uh, we, we use someone's technical here. But in real time, if you want to perform a proper, proper phishing attack, what it requires, I'll tell you. First thing, first thing, choose your target. For example, your target is uh, uh, some, some person. Okay. Some person take some, imagine, imagine I am the person, I kill. So first you need to gather the information about the Akil. So what he likes? Imagine he likes car, cars. So you got this information with you. So now what attacker do is, he create a link, uh, a domain you have to purchase. First to create the link, first you need to get the domain. Some, some, some example.com he is to take. Have to purchase the domain. And again, purchasing the domain, what I have to do? I have to host that domain. Where you have to host that? In server. So you need a server now? Do you require the server now? Obviously. The attacker is not inside your network, right? He's somewhere else. So I have to trick him. So I have to purchase a server, host the server and host a domain in that server and now send that link to the victim. Once the victim click on that link, it will read it to the server. The server will read it to the domain page. And the domain page look like same as some example.com where it uh, is similar to the some car website. So to visit or uh, to know the information about this car, uh, just try to sign up or register this website. So once you register using his email and password, you'll get that. Or else directly they'll ask you to go with the Gmail login. So once you got with the Gmail login, they'll get the username and password. So it's not an easy, you need to have you need to have a proper setup to perform the social engineering, especially the phishing attack. You're getting my point? If your target is a bank, again, you won't get the bank the domains easily. You won't get the bank domains easily. So most of the bank's domains will be blocked or seized. So you have to think that. So if it is a ICIC bank, I'll create the ICICI.bank.com. Now, is that look like similar to the ICIC bank.com? Almost. Almost it look like similar to the ICIC bank.com. So now I'll purchase this domain from GoDaddy or somewhere. And I'll host that domain in a server. Now I need to make this server in public and send this link in public platforms like your Facebook, Instagram or somewhere. And some people randomly will go through that link. Once you click that, it will read it to some page and there it will ask for the username and password. You getting my point? So that is how the things work in real time. All right. So now we'll see. We'll go with some demonstration. So for that, I'm going to use some uh, GitHub repositories. So I'm not having any server. I'm not hosting in a local system. So I want to trick my target who is in over the network. So for that, let me look for, is there any open source tools? So let me go to the GitHub. Let me look for some phishing. You can type for uh, phishing. I'll get many tools. There's an advanced fish, go fish, social fish, next fisher shellfish like you can see many fish here. in that i use jetfisher actually let me check jetfisher just select this and you know right how to run them yes or no you know right how to run the github repositories you know right how to run the github repositories no, you have an idea, right? We performed already in, in information gathering. So now go with the root and two scenario. Now,
उसमें गो विथ किट क्लोन print copy that up and repository exactly so just copy that <coughs> uh, git clone and go with that url so when i run that all right go with ls we have chat fisher cd chat fisher and go with ls so it's a bash script it is running so dot slash jetfisher.sh so you can see it's installing the packages and it is going with some installing cloud fair services also now tell me will this script work within the network or over the network will the script work within the network or over the network what do you think Hmm. So let me take the Instagram. So you can see we have Instagram too. Just go with that, and uh, you can select a page option. Like uh, I'll convince them. Like I'll I'll increase your followers, or a lot of followers will get you like that. I'll make them to trick, and they'll send. I'll send the link to them. So let me go with the traditional login only. Just click on one. Here you have the three local servers. So three servers you are having. One is local server, which we call as a local host. Which will work within the network, and Cloudflare is not working. You can see it's an auto detects, and local expo is working, which is max for fifteen minutes. So let me go with the local expo. So let me try for three. Do you have any customized port? No. Wait for that. It will set in the PHP server for you. Create an account. Not having any account of any problems. Let me go with Cloudflare. Let's check. All right, so now open this link. Can you see it look like same as Instagram page? Can you see that even even I can send it in chat box. Just open that. Oh, sorry. Right. So once you click on that, you can see I can see your IP addresses. I got your IP addresses first thing. And once you go with the username and password, I'll get the username and password here. Got it? Just go with some random username and password. Anyone? Yeah, you went for that. Huh? So here you can see. So it's not your original username and password, right? Make sure if it is the same, don't give your original username and password. I hope Monica is. It is not your password, right? If so, again, just try to change that. All right. So you can see there is a connection. Like I'm getting that username and password. Here. This is how I trick. But uh, you, if you observe here, if you observe here, is that the link whatever I'm giving here? Whatever the link I'm giving here, is that a belongs to? So is that belongs to the Instagram.com? No, right? So how to identify in the sense, what is the URL of Instagram? It's an Instagram.com. But the URL, what it is showing here for me? So what is it showing here for me? 
it's showing as in Instagram, but the URL is not same. So you need to look for that URL. So that is what I'm telling you. You should aware of each and every activity what you guys are having access, especially the URLs. So the, what is the URL of an Instagram? It's an Instagram.com, right? But what it is here? Something. That means it's a fake. It's a phishing one. That is what I told you at the beginning. URL is very important to remember. They may trick you guys. Right? Or even they'll, they'll do these kind of activities. For example, uh, you know, email. Through emails only most of the time they'll trick you guys. So remember. So let me go with the email. So just uh, let me click on compose. Let me click and send it to some Akhil. And subject is uh, uh, Instagram support like that. I'll, I'll trick them. So hi. Uh, hi. Uh, like that they'll, they'll they'll write some mail they'll compose some mail saying that uh, uh you you your account got blocked uh, so to reactivate your account uh, uh just contact to this or click on this link like that they convince you people you getting my point so they simply convince you people by sending that link so for example let me copy this url so what i'm going to do is if i send that url can you easily identify that, right? It is not belongs to Instagram, yes or no? Will you be able to identify that? It is not belongs to the Instagram, right? Right, you can you can easily find that. It says as an Instagram support, but the URL is not belongs to Instagram. So now what I'll do is, how the hackers trick you guys is actually, here you have the link option, insert the link. So text to display is HTTPS colon slash slash www dot Instagram dot com. This is the URL which show and web address should be here. Click on OK. Now what it is showing for you? Now what it is showing for you? Instagram like a, a help desk or something. I'll tell you contact help desk like that. I'll Right, so like that, I'll send a mail to the Akhil. So now if you see Akhil has received that mail. You can see this. Right, so for him it's showing as a Instagram.com. So obviously you'll click on that. So it will redirect to the page, it will open the Instagram only, but I'm not looking for the URL now. You're getting my point? Are you guys able to follow me? Yeah, what I did, I just changed the link of the, the main URL as the Instagram here. So this is how you get the mails actually. The URL look like same as an Instagram.com only. When you click that, it will redirect to a page which look like Instagram only again, but we people won't look for the URL here, right? Because you look for the page, or else will be on that part. But because you have seen the Instagram.com here, here itself, here itself, right? So I'll click that. It will go to the Instagram page where it looks like Instagram. You'll type the username and password, and you can click on login. Again, it will redirect to the some suspectable something like that phishing site. Okay, I'm. Uh, it is detecting from my end. I'm using an antivirus basis, so it's detecting me, right? So. They'll create a proper website there. Here we are using some third party sources. So that is how it is detecting. But in real time, we can't depend on these things, right? So we need to go for a, we need to go for a trusted one. Means we have to create our own domain, which look like similar to this Instagram, or we need to create a domain, which look like a banking domain. Like that, we have to convince the people, click on that and look like same website. That is how they do in real time. For that, we need to have a proper setup. So how will you identify these things? How will you guys identify these things? So remember, whenever you receive any mail, okay, whenever you receive any mail and that mail contains any of the file, 
download that file, verify with the virus total. First thing, you know virus total, right? Previously we did malware analysis. Go in that way. If it is a link, if it is a link, make sure just roll over your mouse onto that link. So when you roll over the mouse on that link, if you see at this point in this bottom here, it will show you the original link. Can you see? When I roll over the mouse on that particular link, it is showing the original original link there in the bottom. Can you see that? At this point, at this point, it will show you. When I just roll over the mouse, it shows the original link where it is redirecting. Where it is redirecting. Right. So you can find them. So without opening that, okay, it's look like Instagram, but when I, when I roll out the mouse, see, I'm not opening that without opening, I can say where it is going. So it's going to this particular mini navigator submission structure dot to try cloudfair.com. Some, some random, it's not an Instagram for me. It's showing as an Instagram, but it is redirected into some page. So consider that it has a suspicious link. Getting that. Are you guys able to follow me? So that is how they do. So in real time, what hackers do is, imagine I'm having a server. Okay, I'm having a server. I'm using a XAMPP server. So in this XAMPP server, I have hosted the Instagram website. Okay, so you need to run that server first. Imagine the server is running. Let me get the command. This is a local server like how you have an Apache server and Kali same. So when I go to the Google, it's 192.168.0.188. When I run this, can you see the Instagram hacks? So it looked like a page. So when you click on this and when you, when you run that password, click on that, it says for not for not phone, but here the attacker got the credentials. Can you see the log text? Now you can see these are all the usernames and passwords he got. So this is in real time. We need to purchase a domain. We need to configure the domain to a server, and we host. We need to host that server in public and convince the people to click that links and give their information where the server will collect that information and use them later. Getting so that is how the phishing work here. So we are using a third party services. So remember, we are using a third party services here. Like uh, these are all someone's uh, tool. We are just hosting it on our local server or local system and we are doing that. But it, when it comes to the real time scenario, we have to host a domain. We need to purchase a domain. Got it. So in, 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 in the previous times, I have seen many cases. They'll create a domain like this, PayTRN. So it will be R N, not M. Actually, Paytm is M, right? So they'll go with R N. There is a minor gap between that. Right? So where it looked like same as Paytm. So like that, they created the domains like uh, Insta, Chrome, right? So where it use R N here again. So it's not Instagram, it's Instagram. Like that, they trick you people. So that is what the phishing is. Is that clear? So how to secure yourself from this phishing? So I'll give five important tricks for you to remember. So phishing is an attempt to obtain this instant information such as usernames, passwords, often malicious reason by misguiding a trustworthy entity in the electronic communication. And you can see, so what do you say? There is a domain, which is amazon.diwalifestival.com. Is that belongs to the Amazon? Not actually, it belongs to Diwali Festival. That is the domain, right? And there is something related to like the icicabanks.something.com. Is this belongs to ICICA bank? No, it belongs to something. But is this belongs to ICICA bank? Yes, well, because icicbank.com is the domain and something is subdomain so you can go in that way so sometimes they'll trick you like facebook again we have 2k so you need to look for that one also facebook 2k scenarios 
or two three o scenarios or o instead of go with zero also so like that so you can see there are five ways to be, be to be safe from malicious emails the first thing is email says it's coming from a company but actually it is from gmail it's not a domain it says bank of america again it says a personal email this is step 1 step 2 never open any attachment or links unless you are 100% sure they are from the trusted sources this is a second important thing you have to remember and third be aware of generally addressed emails means uh, you can say dear customer like that i am not a customer of bank of america but they says as a dear customer and third thing so if you have any any link you can say there is a login.bankofamerica.com but actually when i roll out the mouse onto that where it is redirecting hacker steals your data dot cz that is a web page it is redirecting and uh, grammatically or spelling errors indicates fake again okay so be secure so if you are even 1% uncertain about this email flag it has junk so never forward to the coworkers unless it's your it person so it's kind of an awareness they are giving for you to prevent or protect from the social engineering through these malicious emails so this is what we called as a phishing is it clear everyone how the phishing works in real time so no so we have different types of phishing here one is uh, spare phishing veiling uh we have farming and uh, we have catfishing at and deep fake yeah ang angler fishing spamming like that we have different types of phishing here when it comes to the spare phishing what is the meaning of spare phishing here in area so spare phishing is nothing but here Uh, they are targeting a individual person. So pre actually, phishing is random based. I'll generate a link. I'll post it in some Facebook or Instagram account. Someone will click that. There will be victim for that. But spare phishing is I'm choosing my target. It may be a group of people or it may be an individual. And accordingly, I'll start generating some phishing techniques. That is what spare phishing. So a targeted phishing attack we call. It. Okay. and veiling is nothing but targeting the high profiles like ceos ctos or celebrities or politicians we target them why because you know they have the complete access to the confidential and highly valuable information so comparing to a employee if i target the ceo i'll get more information so that scenario we call as a veiling and we have the farming so farming is nothing but where attacker redirects the web traffic to a fraudulent website simply by installing a malicious program on a personal computer or a server right and it is also known as uh, like dns poisoning or dns catchy scenarios this comes under the farming only and uh, spamming is nothing but here uh, spamming the uh, target by sending continuously flooding the spam across the network uh, and uh, using some bots i'll make them to down or make them to give the information that is what spamming scenario and uh, angler phishing is nothing but creating some fake social media accounts like impersonating you how many of you are using instagram account here how many of you guys are using the instagram account here almost everyone right all so how many of your accounts are in public in public in public 
is your accounts in public yeah great so actually uh, don't make or keep your accounts in public you may think like what i am having in my accounts or there is nothing on the side that is where they trick you actually so for example imagine my account like uh, a kill like 319 something okay so what i'll do as a hacker i'll take this it is in public so i'll start downloading all his files i'll follow all his followers or following things i'll collect all this information and what i do is i'll create the akil day under triple nine like that can i can't i create with this name can't i create the profile with this name this is genuine and original this is the fake now i'll start uh, posting all the photos whatever he posted in 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 a sequence and then i'll start following the guys whoever he is following and then i'll start pretending or performing as an impersonation here you getting my point so they'll create a fake account on your name and start doing some crimes or performing some frauds yeah so that is what uh, the angle of phishing so fake social media account and impersonating an organizations or some people and asking for money or something like that are doing some cyber bullying same catfishing also attacker targets a person on a social media platform and perform identity theft and to create the fake social media accounts so similar to the catfishing angler here they are targeting the organization basis and contacting them but here they are completely performing on that and nowadays you can see the famous uh, attack is called uh, deep fake we call this as a spay uh, like face swapping you may heard about that face swapping so especially the girls if your account is in public they'll download all your photos and they go with the deep fake and they'll send that and start blackmailing you means they make your pics nudity and they'll start blackmailing you people so be aware of that so don't keep your accounts in 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 public maintain some privacy better maintain everything in private and maintain some privacy there so we people do all these things again we'll uh, think like uh, someone hacked our thing no 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 one will hack no one will come to your home take your device or hack your device nothing like that so remote hacking is not possible to be frankly saying simply they trick you people to click on that link or to give the permission of that application right so a uh, be careful in that see that is where the guy performed but nowadays many of them use some advanced technology and they use some uh, some vpns or services where it is bit difficult to trace them so be careful don't think like it is easy again to catch that person takes time so that's a big issue that is a big celebrity so it's solved what about a normal person will they do that in that way what if you lost some file acts or if a big person lost you can see the difference see it happens they can they can do that but takes time again so some people will do that so be careful from your end you should be aware of these things right so you should not wait until the attack happen then we'll see that no not like that be be prepared for that so don't click on the links don't put your uh accounts in, in public don't post everything in that so don't give your information not to click any link not to open any file without uh, the uh, knowledge so just stop think and click this is what i can say as i told you there is no software or hardware to prevent the social engineering attack again i'm telling you once you are the victim stun right got it is it clear everyone so maintain some privacy here so the social engineering performs see uh, without your knowledge nothing will happen you people only download this loan apps you will only give the permission for them and you will only think that you got hacked who gave your permission to that application you guys only give the permission for that application right so you should be responsible for that 
again you will do all these things and say that some mobile got hacked so that's how the things happens so be aware of that don't click on any link don't download any files especially nowadays from telegram we'll download some applications additional third party applications through that also they'll take the entry right so as i mentioned this is completely social uh, computer based social engineering right when it comes to the mobile based social engineering so here i mentioned some tools you can go with that so mobile based how they do the activities can you see so mostly they'll publish the malicious apps in third party right so for example how many of you use this uh, uh, how many of you played pubg pubg thing so you can say i am hosting a server actually in pubg i'm having own server so how i'm tricking everyone is so simple just i'll show you Mm -hmm. The server was down right now. Okay, uh, actually it was down. Okay, we'll see it later. So how the trick you actually is simple. Uh, like how many of you use this uh, WhatsApp GB or uh, yeah, trick UC basis. Yeah, so many must take you through UC. Uh, actually, I build that. Uh, I'll get a complete details of that particular thing. Uh, I think I have that uh, details in So you can see, uh, I'll get that. So you can see, uh, once you click on that uh, portal, like it will spin and it will get the information. A character ID, phone number, account details, login, their IP address, the longitude and latitude scenarios, and their uh, username. So we'll get all these details actually. So server we hosted. So once once they use the details, I'll get that details to my mails actually. That is how I configure that. But right now the server is down. I look for that. So or else they'll host some third party applications. You can see the attacker created a malicious application and uh, hosted in some third party. Like you may heard about this GB WhatsApp or Ping WhatsApp or something. So whatever the applications you download from Google or some other third party stores that we called as a third party application. So when you download the third party application and when you give the permissions, the data will go to the attacker actually. Or even the attacker will do the repackaging the legitimate applications like by doing some reverse engineering. So for example, there is a genuine deliver, uh, legitimate deliver, sorry, legitimate developer where he developed an application, it's a game application or any other instant messenger application hosted on the mobile play store. Now, what hackers do, they download that and they implement some malicious packages into that application and they'll release that in the third party app stores. And we people download, like especially the mod APKs, mod applications, you may have about the mod applications. So that is how these things work. So you guys will download from this third party and whatever the data or the permissions you are giving that is going to the a malicious developer, not a legitimate developer here, remember. Okay, so this is how they trick you or even through SMS. So you'll get an SMS saying that uh, uh, you got some amount of uh, money into your account. So uh, if not, uh, just click on this link. Uh, once you click on that link, uh, it will redirect to some login page where they'll collect all your information through SMS. So that is how, uh, or releasing some fake security applications that collect the information. This is mobile based scenario. So this is how the people will trick you through this uh, social engineering, right? So we think that our data is not in public, but yeah, it's always in public only. We use number of applications. If one application got breached, the data will be in public, right? So that is how this phishing works. So angular phishing is same, cat phishing and deep fake scenarios. So make sure uh, be secure from these kind of attacks, especially this uh, cat phishing and deep faking. So nowadays these are more happening. So be secure from these kind of things. So not to click any link or not to share your account in public platforms. Okay. So what we be able to do to increase the followers, we keep our account in public. So but where that is an advantage for the hackers to get into their systems. 
and uh, this is how the things work is that clear everyone is that clear the social engineering techniques and that how that trick you guys so go with this human based social engineering computer based social engineering and mobile based social engineering and apart from that take the task So go with this uh, social engineering techniques, and I I I didn't I'm not going with this technique called uh, ID and homographic. You have to do research on that. I need a proper documentation on that. So there is an ID and homographic attack. Find that, and we'll see how many of you do that. So I need about ID and homographic attack. It's old technique, uh, but uh, you won't believe that uh, there is a, these kind of technique also there around. So that kind of attack it is. Just check that how the things work in that. Okay, and then go with the uh, insider attack. Say so I need insider attack, and uh, it's types. And go with the uh, identity theft. And I have given some countermeasures for the phishing and all these things, but fine. Countermeasures for so this is your task for the next session. So are you guys submitting the task actually? I can't see that only few people are doing that. Only 10 to, only, not 10 also, only like 5 to 10 people I can see. So just go through this topic. Say so in that one of the important topic is ID and homographic. Uh, let's see who do that. Uh, it's kind of a alphabetic scenario. Right? So just try that. Okay. So this is your task for the next session. So can't you tell about the grand test? I couldn't attend a stress class. Uh, how to submit the task? I have given the link for you, right? Even you have that link in the Telegram group, the form link. You need to submit the form. I think I have told you many times, but again. So just go to your drive, create your own uh, folder. So create some folder here, new task. So create a task folder. So once you create the folder, so just upload the files here, whatever the task you did, just upload the task. Okay. So once you upload that, make sure try to share the link of the folder, not file link. I need link of the folder. So just copy link. And make sure again, 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 one more thing is click on share and uh, restrict this. Go with anyone, anyone with this link and copy that. And I have shared the form. I have shared the form actually. So fill that form your name, college name, role number, email ID, contact, and uh, the drive link you need to submit here. Whatever the link you have copied there, submit that uh, link here. And if you have any suggestions, go with the suggestions. Okay. Is that clear? I think Gayatri, right? I think uh, I told you this. Who did the last session task? It's in Telegram. I can't send that. Check 
associated with the task. So total, I think you got 15 tasks in now. So 15 tasks, remember. Minimum, there should be 10 to 12. If it is less than that, uh, I can't do anything. As you know, uh, assignments and tests are very important to get a certification. So remember that. Some people still, Charan, I think, I told you don't go with the link of the file here. Go with the folder. How they are sharing the folder, see. Again, you are sharing the link of the file. And that too, you did the first task, first module about the cyber kill chain. So what about the remaining scanning, enumeration, there is system hacking, there is malware analysis. Uh, and some people there says share the link in the sense they have said no, okay, Google Drive, okay, like that. What is this? Uh, I'll review that at the end. So remember, I marked some people as red. Right, in the sense they didn't do the task. I won't consider that the assignments. So we'll review that soon. I'll update that. So go with the task, everyone. Okay. So I'm sharing some documents in the chat box. Let me go with the task document and social engineering document. That will be updated by the team. I have no idea. They'll tell you. Again, they'll tell you what to do in this project. Okay. They'll get back to you. See, they are very, very basic projects managed. Not a mini project or major project. The project is related to your uh, internship. Whatever the topics we cover. So from the topics, I have given some topics just do that okay just use some alternate tools for that that is what the project is. it's a basic project so it's not a mandatory thing there so the mandatory is the test and the assignments are mandatory here okay is that clear everyone yeah uh, the team will share the feedback form for you so if you are having any doubts, yeah, you guys can ask me or else, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for attending the session, guys. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Is there anyone from SVC the college? Yeah. What is Sri Venkateshwara College? What it is? Sri Venkateshwara College, Sanjay Kumar is there. Sanjay Kumar Raju. Can't register my team as I am the only one from my college. See, if it is only one also, you can go with that. Okay. So if you are only one, it's a, it's a, it's a mini, like, like basic project. Okay. So what is the pattern for today's grand test? Uh, I think it's MCQ basis. You need to log into the portal and you need to go with that. So the questions I have given from the topics which we covered completely. 
and some unique related task related questions will be there. Uh, is there anyone from Black Box? Uh, Akila, are you there? Just share attendance sheet. Attendance link here. All right. They'll share that, guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. See you next time. Better go with the laptop. No idea how it will be. I think they'll give the portal access. You can log into that. I think you have tapped up portal access, right? See, uh, about the project team will contact you again. Okay. They'll explain you what to do. They'll demonstrate on that. No worry. Okay, I'll update you about that. Don't worry. All right.